Well, let's move on now and talk about the WMI related tasks, of which there are two in integration services. So WMI, this is going to stand for Windows Management Instrumentation. So I'm on Windows 2008, and if I go to my services, I don't know if my accent messes this up, you know, I've got people from 170 countries or so that watch these videos, so I have to be conscious of how I say certain things here. Uh, let's see here, right there, you can see it. I hope uh, you can see that pretty well. So this is actually a service, and it's part of the foundation of Windows, and we just call it WMI here in SSIS as well as sysadmin level. WMI is well beyond my total comprehension. It is a complex way of receiving events, creating events, event registration, all kinds of things. I mean, I, I really don't think I have a great grasp of it. However, what's so awesome is that I don't have to to be able to take advantage of WMI. I need to understand kind of the surface of how it affects me as a SQL Server developer slash DBA. And then from that, I can back my way into understanding what I need to know about WMI. If you've watched our SQL Server 2008 database administration videos, we have, or the 2005 version, we have several sections on using WMI with alerts in SQL Server. So there are other places outside of SSIS we can use WMI. I'm just going to focus here on WMI in SQL Server and what we can, or rather in SSIS and all the coolness that we can do. That being said, I have a set of canned scripts that I use anytime I'm going with WMI. Whenever I've needed to write WMI queries, it's just a search engine love fest. I get in the search engine, I dig around trying to find something, somebody, somewhere, please have written this for me. I don't know WQL, which is the Windows Management Instrumentation Query Language, WQL, very well. I can halfway do it. But I can do enough to accomplish the task that I need to, and I take those code samples, I save them, and then I can reuse those and as many SSIS packages and tasks as I need to. So I know I'm, I'm making it sound like I'm this WMI wimp, and truthfully I kind of am, but that really doesn't matter because I can do what I need to be able to do in SSIS. Are there people that can do more with WMI? Yes, there are. Okay, and I'm going to keep this at a beginner level because I, like I've already admitted, I don't know a ton about it. But I think I can show you some really cool stuff and leave you with a good understanding of what you would use WMI for and how you could go about finding more information if you wanted to go deeper. I think that's the value that I bring to this. So let me go ahead and create a, an integration services package, just a generic package. And I will include this one with this video so that you don't have to type all of this stuff. So I'm going to call this WMI01. It will be included with this. I'm also going to include a WQL file uh, that will contain all of the scripts that you could use, just some ideas rather of scripts that you could run to give you some good information. So if we take a look over here in our toolbox, scrolling down towards the bottom, but not quite at the maintenance plan level, we see we have the WMI events here. So I'm going to do the event watcher task in this video. We'll come back in the next video and take a look at the data reader task. Now let's just start. Got to have that WMI service running. Remember I showed you that in the services. It's automatically running as part of the operating system. Chances are you're not going to have turned it off, but just make sure it is running on the server that this is going to run on. Okay. So let's start with the event watcher. Effectively what the event watcher does is it watches for WMI events to raise and when those events are when those events occur then the rest of the package can continue. So for example, I'm going to show you some uh, probably the number one most common use of the WMI event watcher task is wait for file to hit folder. Now, this is very common in the ETL world. We are waiting for a file. We have an external process that kicks off and downloads a file or uh, an external process that creates a file. We then need to load that file when it's finished 
and load it into SQL Server. Well, what, that's what we're going to use the WMI for. So it's basically going to watch for a folder to have a file put into it. Doesn't matter whether it was pasted in there, whether it was created in there. As soon as a file goes into this folder, then the event will be raised and we'll be able to then process it. Now normally I would follow this with a data flow task. Somehow once the file is there, I would then load the file into the database. But we haven't covered the data flow task yet. So this is another opportunity to use that script task. And let's do this. Let's just have uh, two tasks, two script tasks, one for success and one for failure. So when this, thank you. <laughs> I just should never do that. Um, when this actually occurs, we'll be able to tell. Uh, so we'll call this one success and misery. Okay. And all I'm going to do is just make them do a message box, right? I'll do this one C sharp, the other one VB. Message box. If I'm writing something that seems foreign to you, WMI event watcher was successful. Then you need to go back and watch our video about adding script tasks and the reasons that we might do so. Uh, oops, and I said I would do that one in VB, didn't I? Dang it. Uh, it's miserable that I have to remove misery. Let's try again. And again, I, it seems like maybe to some of you that I'm going fast. Remember that we're halfway through chapter four. We're almost halfway through the course. So uh, we've been doing this. We, the collective we, have been doing this now for many, many hours. And right now I'm not doing anything new. So it might behoove you to go back and watch the other videos. Uh, miserable failure. And go ahead and see about fixing my spelling errors. And so let's go ahead and down here. Notice that it uses that acronym WQL. You see that right there, the WQL query is missing. We use a select from and where based language with Windows Management Instrumentation to write against instances. So we will write a query querying the properties to test their values and then we will see what happens. So let me give you some example queries. Now I've got this loaded in a SQL file just so that my formatter here makes it look pretty. And it is attached as WMI01 in this one. And here is some basic WQL queries. So here is an instance creation event. So we are saying select all from, let's just focus on that at, for the time being. So we're saying when something gets created. Now there are instance creation events, there's an instance modification event, an instance deletion event. I want to know that something has been created. Next part of my query. What is my polling frequency? 10 seconds, within 10. So you are defining the polling sequence. You're defining how frequently WMI will query to determine whether an instance of this type down here has been created. So it defaults to seconds here, so within 10. It defaults to within 0, which isn't going to do us any good for SSIS. I would suggest, gosh, it's, let me hold off on a best practice slash suggestion here. I don't know that you have enough information for it to make too much sense. So we have a where clause, right? So where target instance. Now where am I getting all these things? Target instance, CIM, directory contains file, group component. A couple of different ways. One of those ways is from your search engine and finding good examples, right? I Go, looking up in Books Online, Books Online has a couple of good examples. I actually pulled this directly from Books Online. This is almost identical to the one in Books Online. So search engines will help you here.